What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're at day two of the coffered ceiling job. I guess it's technically day three because we did a lot of prep the first day. But we got all of our Windsor One boards right here. And as you can see, these are Windsor One protected boards, interior, exterior, which is great for us because the weather is not really cooperating with us today. Now we don't want to get these things wet because all materials are going to change in humidity and moisture. So I had them protected with this tarp right here on the way over here and they're going to be good to go. We're set up in the garage here. You know, we can't wait for this weather to cooperate. The show must go on and it just feels better having these treated boards to work with. So this is our half perimeter board right here. You can see it has this 31 degree uh, angled cut on it and that's so it can hug to the drywall tighter. So that's what that is. Now, where these boards are gonna join in the corners, you're gonna have one that's to this wall with that bevel, and then one that's to that wall. So it'd be just like this. Now, what we wanna do, what we wanna accomplish is to get these boards where they're flush on the install. So we've been thinking about this. I know you guys have seen us, you know, kind of put these pieces in and pocket hold assemblies, but that's just not gonna work for, for what we're doing today. There's too many things that could go wrong and it's just, uh, it would be a big monstrosity. We'd need, need like two extra people to help us do this. So to still accomplish having these things line up flush, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the plate joiner or biscuit joiner as it's commonly known as. And we're gonna just slot two areas where these meet for plates or biscuits. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get about right there. It doesn't have to be perfect with these things. You have a, quite a bit of room for movement. So I'm just gonna get right about there and then make the slot. So that one has a slot in it now and that one represents turning to that wall. And then we have our bevel cut here. So I need to make another slot right here. So I'm just gonna line it up roughly where it needs to go and then make the cut. And for those of you who've never seen one of these before, basically it has this spring action and when you push it up against the workpiece, you see that blade come out. So it's like a tiny circular saw blade just uh, cutting in there. So now that I have that, I'll take one of these biscuits and then, so this is just like a small piece of compressed wood and this will just slide in there and then it'll slide in there. And what that's gonna do, see how there's quite a bit of movement there, but I can still get that thing to line up. That's how we have our biscuit joiner set up. So we don't have to just get it dead on perfect. The whole purpose of this is to prevent something like this from happening. So let me show you with the other side, like that. We don't want that to happen. That is bad. Or even like, that's pretty exaggerated. But just, we want this as flush as it can be. So if this is like a step down, some of that stuff we can sand. But if you have a, a mechanism in there, a pocket hole or a biscuit, just to prevent that from happening. Like I can't even do that if I wanted to. It's gonna line it up. Now this biscuit right here, it's basically just compressed wood. You can see all on the side there. And whenever it gets water on it, it's gonna soak up that water and puff up. And that's actually what's gonna lock the joint in place. You say, how's it gonna get water on it? Well, you're gonna use a water-based glue and you're gonna saturate it with that. And it's gonna absorb the water, the glue's gonna dry. And the theory is, is that it's just gonna lock it in place. So not only is it an alignment, it's actually a, uh, it's actually a joint. So it's gonna hold it. So with that, we're gonna go take our measurements. We're gonna make our cuts with our biscuit joiner and then See if we can get this thing to work out how we want it. Bosch Blaze is gonna say 165 and 5 sixteenths.
Yeah, it's perfect. How's your alignment good? All right, I'm good now. We'll send it. How's your alignment? With this glue bot, I can actually inject the uh, slot like that. And then I'll go ahead and throw some all over this as well. I'm pretty willing. All right, see if you can pull down the middle. We're in, yeah, let me slide over there. If you keep that pressure on it, I'll slide over there and uh, get that fixture lined up. Oh, I don't have to do anything. It's really good. Yeah. So now that we have all of our long boards in going in this direction, we need to get the short ones going in this direction. And I mentioned earlier with these biscuits, you kind of need some clearance. So it's, we can do it with the long ones because you can flex it, kind of get that pinch fit. But with these shorter ones, obviously that board is just not gonna flex. If it's a small board like this one, you're not gonna be able to bend this thing. There's just no way. The longer it is, the easier it is to bend. So we can't really depend on flexing it in and getting the clearance for those biscuits, but we've come up with something that's going to work and it may be, you may think it's over engineered or overkill, but I don't because we could just put our blocking up there and nail both of these boards to it and it'll, it'll align them. It really will, but there's really no space for glue and we can't really just throw glue on the edge of these primered boards, it's not really gonna stick too well. So we're still gonna do the biscuits, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. And it actually worked, we experimented with it right here, but I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this board, I'll show you guys, I'm gonna clamp this thing right here. And then, how you would typically, you know, just plunge into this thing. Instead of doing that, you're gonna plunge in and then slide across. And basically you're gonna use the biscuit joiner to make a dado in this thing. So it, it actually works. So I'll show you how it's done. And it's not hard to do because you're still using this as a reference. So as long as you keep it straight and slide across and don't you know, get out of square there, you can make it happen. Now what you end up with is basically like a quarter inch dado right here, instead of just your typical um, plunge cut from the biscuit joiner. 
And then what you do, you take this thing, like say I was gonna install it right here. So we run our biscuit into there and into here. We install it up here already. And we just take this thing. This is obviously just a piece of scrap. But then we can get it in place and then just use the mallet and tap it over into place. That's exactly what we did over there and it worked really good. But what we decided to add after doing that one, we decided to add these extra blockings right here. These are just nailed up from here and those are gonna help also with the alignment. So we'll have a nice glued joint right there. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm always up to try new things, learn new things and experiment on the job. If it's not gonna mess anything up, which it's not, we'll give it a shot and see how it works. So now that we have all of those slots cut for the biscuits up here, we're going to go ahead and take all of our measurements for the inside here, which pretty much should be all the same. So we got all of our boards cut now, and while John's in there installing the biscuits on the ceiling, I'm going to go ahead and make these slots. And remember, this biscuit that's going to be in here, it's going to expand and it's going to hold those two boards together. So it's not just an alignment tool, although it is very much known for that. So like I mentioned, John already had these biscuits already glued in, and then I'll just saturate this side of them. And then the theory goes, we slide this in, and I'll just use this mallet and tap it into place. See, that's pretty good. So that thing's gonna be good to go. We just gotta do that to the rest of the room and we're gonna get started on that now. So there you have it. We have all of these bottom boards installed for the box beams on the coffered ceiling. John is actually filling the nail holes already and getting that going. So we're getting some of this prep work done. And we're actually going to call it a day here. I'm going to uh, tack up two samples for her to look at, the customer, and she's going to make a decision on reveal. She's actually not here right now. So we'll tack up two samples with different reveals and she's going to tell me which one she wants in the morning and I think we're making some good progress on this. The rest of this is just wrapping these coffers with the, uh, the uh, one by six, setting the proper reveal, and then wrapping it with crown. Very pleased with this job. It's looking great. All right, so that's gonna do it for this part of the project and for this video. We're gonna come back tomorrow, finish trimming this thing out, set our proper reveals with all this one by six Windsor one over here and that primed colonial crown right there and knock this thing out. It's going really good so far and uh, yeah, couldn't be happier with the progress. So thank you for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one, which will be doing everything I just said. See ya. Oh yeah, and if you're still here, anybody have any idea what all this is? It rained today, but it hadn't rained in months. And this has been on my truck for like a week. Now the only thing I can think of 
is I got these new wheels and tires. They're, it's all stock sizes. I didn't want to raise up the truck. I considered it, but it's just expensive. And yeah, it's not gonna happen. I really like the height of the truck. Super easy to get things in and out of it. So this is staying here. Although I am gonna have some really sweet upgrades coming up on this. It's, it is gonna be insane. So stick around for that. I'll do a whole truck video. But yeah, when you get new wheels and tires, why would this, what, what is all this? It's crazy. I don't get it. It's up here, it's on the other side, and it's over here. It looks like some kind of overspray. The only thing I can think of is just like rubber residue from these things. So who knows? But anyways, let me know if you have any idea in the comments. I'll catch you guys later.